Lately, I've been noticing a surge of ads for natural remedies claiming to treat hair loss. It seems every day there's a new article about a miracle cure with promises of restored locks without any side effects. But how valid are these claims? We're going to look at these claims and debunk the fallacy of natural remedies for hair loss being better than synthetic or man-made ones. Primarily, we're going to be looking at the dichotomy between finasteride and salt palmetto, two common treatments with very different reputations. Finasteride is a proven, FDA-approved treatment that reduces DHT levels, which, in turn, helps slow or halt hair loss. Salt palmetto, on the other hand, is a popular natural remedy that is claimed to have similar effects, but without the side effects associated with finasteride. But is this really true? The goal of finasteride, and ostensibly salt palmetto, is to reduce DHT levels. But let's take a moment to recognize that attempting to fight hair loss in and of itself goes against nature. Hair loss is often a result of genetic expression, and by trying to prevent it through the use of these products, whether natural or man-made, we are indeed attempting to manipulate nature. So right off the bat, the whole natural fallacy, natural or nature being good for you, we're kind of going against that if we're trying to stop hair loss or male pattern baldness. If saw palmetto were truly effective in reducing DHT levels, we would expect it to have a similar side effect profile as finasteride. However, advocates of natural remedies argue that saw palmetto is free from side effects because it's natural. But if we accept that hair loss is a natural process driven by our genes and hormones, then trying to alter this process through a natural remedy should logically come with risks, just like any other intervention. And if lowering DHT causes a side effect, in some people, saw palmetto's lowering of DHT to even have an effect and impact on your hair loss should also be coupled with that side effect profile as well. You growing hair in and of itself is a side effect due to the reduction of DHT if saw palmetto is actually making any sort of meaningful impact to the point where you're seeing a halt or a slowdown in the progression of androgenetic alopecia. The fact that Saul Palmetto is marketed as both effective and side effect free is a clear contradiction revealing the fallacy of the natural remedy argument. Moreover, scientific evidence supporting the effectiveness of Saul Palmetto in treating hair loss is limited and inconsistent. Unlike finasteride, which has been rigorously tested and proven to be effective, Saul Palmetto's purported benefits are largely anecdotal. This further underscores the problematic nature of assuming that natural remedies are inherently better or safer than their synthetic counterparts. Now, natural remedies are often appealing because they give people the illusion of safety. They're promoted as gentle, risk-free alternatives to conventional treatment. However, this notion of safety is misleading. Many natural substances can interact with other medications or cause serious side effects, particularly if consumed in excessive amounts or used improperly. The lack of regulation in the natural remedy market also raises concerns about the quality, purity, and consistency of these products. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that over half of the dietary supplements they tested contained ingredients that were not listed on the label, with some even containing dangerous substances. Another study titled, quote, Unapproved Pharmaceutical Ingredients Included in Dietary Supplements Associated with U.S. Food and Drug Administration Warnings, unquote, finds unapproved pharmaceutical ingredients in supposedly nature-based products. This lack of oversight highlights the risks associated with unregulated natural remedies. Without strict regulation, there's no guarantee that what you're getting is safe, effective, or even what it claims to be. This can be particularly dangerous for people with allergies or sensitivities to certain ingredients. By choosing these natural remedies and cures, we might inadvertently expose ourselves to risks that we might have avoided had we opted for evidence-based treatments. It's crucial to weigh these risks carefully and to prioritize our health by seeking out reliable, scientifically-backed solutions. Now, the power of the placebo effect. It is very important to consider this effect in the perceived success of natural remedies. The placebo effect occurs when a person's experiences an improvement in their condition, not because of the actual treatment, but because they believe the treatment will work, or by some other coincidence, outside of the treatment itself. The power of positive thinking can be strong, and it can sometimes make people feel better 
even if the treatment itself is ineffective. While the placebo effect may bring temporary relief or satisfaction to some, it does not address the root cause of hair loss or androgenetic alopecia that would provide any sort of lasting solution. Relying on unapproved natural remedies can waste time, money, and may even discourage people from seeking out evidence-based treatments that could genuinely help them. So in conclusion, we must be cautious when considering natural remedies for hair loss. These products are often marketed as safe and effective, playing on the fallacy that natural equals better. However, we've seen that this is far from the truth. Nature is indifferent and natural remedies can be just as risky or even harmful as potential synthetic treatments. When it comes to androgenetic alopecia or hair loss in general, choose evidence-based treatments and don't be swayed by the empty promises of unapproved natural remedies, it's a waste of time. It's crucial to educate yourself, question marketing claims, and prioritize your health by seeking out reliable, scientifically backed solutions. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye guys.